Follow along as we build a fitting tribute to the Land Rover Defender. This series is brought to you by LR Centre Limited and Frost Auto Restorers. And SIP Industrial Products. This is Spray Booth Mark II. It's a budget setup that increases air temperatures and reduces humidity, giving you ideal painting conditions. We'll show you how to set it up in an upcoming episode. It's worked a treat on our wheels and produces flawless results. Once the wheels are cured, we took them along to a local tyre fitters. We've chosen tubeless Goodyear MTR tyres, teamed with heavy duty wolf steel rims, as seen on Heritage Special Edition Defenders. Our tyre fitter is using a tyre bead lubricant which offers anti-corrosion properties and helps the tyre bead slip over the bead seating flange on the wheel. He's already fitted the tyre valve and stem and secured the wheel in the pneumatic tyre fitting machine. Using the machine's guide he's able to carefully ease the rear wall of the tyre over the outboard bead seat. Then slip the front bead of the tyre over the outboard lip of the wheel. And that's the tyre effectively in place. It just needs air to complete the fitting and also seat the tyre in its resting position. This goes with quite a bang as the bead snags up on the safety humps of the wheel and then pings past it, hence why the tyre is lubricated to prevent damage and also to allow it to expand and then seat nicely. I'm very happy with the wheels. The SIP Sapphire HVLP gun we used to paint them has given an effortless, smooth paint finish. It's a top spray gun for the money, it's worked really well. The wheel fitting machine does sometimes graze the lip of the wheel, so using an artist brush you can just go back and touch those in for a very quick and also seamless repair. Whilst those paint touch-ups are drying, I'll fit my brake pads and retainers. We've chosen EBC green stuff pads to match the EBC discs. This Land Rover will stop on a penny if we need to. I've applied a little bit of copper slip to the retaining pins which are then slid through the springs and you may have to tap those in with a hammer to locate them. Our kit from LRparts.net included a neat clip that replaces the fiddly and easily lost split pins. Now I can finally put the build wheels on. To fit wolf steel rims, it's also advisable to use part number FRC7577, which is a replacement longer wheel stud specifically designed for the wolf rims. Make sure to put a smear of grease on the hole that the drive flange protrudes through on the wheel. And I've got 20 brand new wheel nuts here, so we can put these on now. First tightening them lightly, which stops our wheels from falling off. Then we can nip those up with a socket. Don't ever tighten your wheels fully in the air. It could rock the vehicle off its jacks or damage the drivetrain. Always tighten them incrementally in this pattern, going to the opposite nut in a star shape. This talks them down nice and evenly and makes sure that they're sat correctly. Let us know what you think to the wheel and tyre combo we've chosen. I'm personally very happy with it. In every build, there are milestone moments, reaching rolling chassis stage, completing the bodywork. Today, we're putting our engine back where it belongs. Yes, we're dropping it back into the chassis. First though, I need to bolt up the alternator and vacuum pump as you have more access to do this when it's off the vehicle. This is secured with three bolts. The vacuum pump oil feed is then reinstalled. And the drain pipe too, that needs reconnecting. It's secured with this hose clip and it just simply squeezes together to lock it. To remove the clip, insert a screwdriver into the mechanism, lightly prising it apart and it should spring open. Then using some grips, we can locate the hose onto the outlet from the vacuum pump. If it has a kink in it like this, it's not fitted correctly. Now for the exciting part, we can lift the engine free of its stand. Using appropriately rated shackles and lifting chains, we'll attach it to our engine crane. This one is from SGS Engineering, it's a great value crane and you can watch a review of it here on our channel. 
Having the engine on a stand makes fine positioning very simple. It takes the hard work out of refitting an engine. Land Rover have done a very good job of positioning the lifting eyes on the engine so that it lifts nice and evenly. I'm undoing the four bolts from the back face of the engine to free it from the stand. This is also from SGS Engineering, well worth considering if you've got any amount of work to do on the engine. This job is easier if you have two people, one to guide the engine and stop it from swinging like a huge conker and the other to lift the crane. The engine needs to be lifted clear of the front chassis cross member that runs between the dumb irons. Then it can be rolled into place, accounting for the arc shape that the boom moves in as it lowers and raises. Then we inch it slowly onto the mounts and finally our Land Rover has its power plant back. It does sit slightly on an angle this one, Land Rover have intentionally designed it this way as the TD5 is quite a tall engine, it means that the bodywork of the Defender can remain the same, they didn't have to change that. And you can see how they've accounted for the angle the engine sits at in the TD5 R380 bell housing. Thanks for watching. See you next week. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fun Rover TV. You can see our last episode here and also check us out on funrover.com. We are at Fun Rover on Twitter and Instagram and we're also on Facebook.